nih. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is a terrific Tuesday morning. My name is Barbara Robinson. I am a lifetime member of Riverside in Nashville. However, my membership right now is in my hometown, Grand Avenue, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Charleston, Missouri, where pastor, my pastor is Pastor Lasage Y'all Kasupa. Y'all probably have heard him read on here. So we're excited about that. And today I'm gonna to be reading uh, Proverbs chapter 31. And I am gonna be reading from the New Living Translation. And we're gonna be uh, coming from the SPACE acronym. You're probably familiar with it, but is um, SPACE S, a sin to confess, P, a promise to claim, A, an attitude to adjust or adopt, C, a command to obey, and E, an example to follow. So we're gonna go through that and I hope you've had a chance to go over it and kind of get your um, comments together so you can have something to share. And uh, while we're doing this, I would encourage you to put your prayer request in the chat and we're gonna go and uh, talk to God about all of those when we're done. So I'm gonna open with the word of prayer and then we're gonna get into our reading. So bow with me. Dear God, we're just thanking you for this day. God, we're thanking you for allowing us to start our day with you in your word and giving your name praise. God, I pray that you will be with us through this chapter. I pray that you will anoint our minds, that every word that comes from my mouth. And God, I pray that your words will not return void. And I pray that you will give us something that we can feast on throughout the day. So God, this I pray in your son, Jesus name, amen. So we're gonna get started. Proverbs chapter 31. And we're coming from the New Living Translation. And we're going to be uh, gleaning from the space acronym when we're done. All right. This is a saying from King Lemuel. Verse 1. The sayings of King Lemuel contains this message, which his mother taught him. My son... Oh, my son of, son of my womb, son of my vows, do not waste your strength on women who, those who ruin kings. Verse four, it is not for kings, O Lemuel, to guzzle wine. Rulers should not crave alcohol. For if they drink, they may forget the law and not give justice to the oppressed. Alcohol is for the dying and wine is for those in bitter distress. So let them drink to forget their poverty and remember their troubles no more. Verse eight, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and the helpless and see that they get justice. The next topic is a wife of noble character. Verse 10 says, who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good and not harm all the days of her life. She finds wool and wax and busily spins it. 
She is like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. First, 15 says she gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work with her servant girls. She goes to inspect the field and buys it. With her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She is energetic and strong, a hard worker. Verse 18, she makes sure her dealings are profitable. Her lamp burns late into the night. Her hands are busy spinning thread, her fingers twisting fiber. She extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. She has no fear of winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes. Verse 22, she makes her own best friends. She dresses them in fine linen and purple gowns. Her husband is well known in the city gates where he sits with other civic leaders. She makes him belted linen garments and sashes to sell to the merchants. Verse 25, she is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise. She gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Verse 28, her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Verse 30, charm is deceptive and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Hallelujah. Verse 31 and the final verse, reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. This chapter has always been one of my favorite because it's so intriguing. It gives so much advice to not just the wife, but to just women men in general. Um, the first one, this is uh, the first verses, few verses. It's a warning, a sign of the danger of sexual immorality and the danger of alcohol. So I found that um, it could be a sin to confess if you're overdoing it, but an attitude to adjust if you think that it's okay to, to overindulge in sexual immoralities and overindulge in alcoholic beverages. And it's, it, it's just warning them against what could happen. It could, um, it could alter your, your mind, your thinking, but she's just warning them about that. And then uh, in verses eight and nine, it talks about how she defends the uh, the homeless or the defenseless ones. She she goes out to help those uh, and speak for those who can't speak for themselves. So I found that to be an example to follow. Sometimes we need to reach out to people who need help, and and sometimes they're in poverty. Sometimes they just can't stand up for themselves, speak for themselves, and we should take the time to um, be there for them. So I found that was like an example to follow that they were referring that to. And then it talks about uh, searching for women with character and virtue. 
in verse 10, it says, searching for that virtuous woman or wife. And said, who can find a virtuous woman? And wife? she said, she is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her. And um, speaking of that, you know, women have to be virtuous. We have uh, a lot that we have to deal with. And we need to be there to support our husband. And you've got to be virtuous. Your life has to have worth. And you have to be there for that. So I found that to be an, uh, an example to follow or an attitude to adopt, just changing your mindset. And then verse 11 and 12 talks about the relationship with her husband. Uh, again, it said a virtual wife not only trusts her husband, but it's safety given to her. Her character is trustworthy. Um, she will speak and act with wisdom. So I found that uh, to be an attitude to adopt. You need to have character. You need to speak with wisdom. Therefore, God's blessing will be on the home through you. But uh, a lot of this, the whole chapter was, for me, was, was a lot of examples to follow. There was a lot of attitudes to adopt for this virtual woman. Everything that she does for her family and for other people in the town, in the area of people who uh, might not have, she'll go out and say she uh, buys and sells things. She works and with the money to get, she'll buy things to support her family to support people in the town. I'm like, man, this woman does an awful lot. And I would love to, um, to take a page out of her book and, and apply it to my own life. But she does an awful lot. It takes a lot to fill her shoes. But the, the thing that stood out for me, it says, there are many virtuous and capable women in the world. He said, but you surpass them all. This virtuous woman, wife, surpassed them all. It says, charm is deceptive and beauty does not last. But a woman that fears the Lord will be greatly praised. So that if you fear the Lord and you show that you have a real relationship with him, you will be greatly praised. And one of the commentaries said, she is not only a Martha busy with service, but she's also a Mary walking in fear and reverence with the Lord. So that kind of stood out to me. The virtuous woman will be rewarded by God if she, by the God that she fears, and she will be rewarded by what she has accomplished for her family and herself. Now that was the promise to claim. If I fear God, I'm going to be rewarded by him. So this chapter, this was a very good uh chapter for the um the virtuous woman and wife there's a lot that we can glean from it so i pray that you got something from this there's a lot of examples to follow attitudes to adopt and but that one promise to claim that if we fear the lord and we will be rewarded by him for all that we do all that we accomplish for ourselves and for our families. That's, that's what he expects us to do. All right, well, thank you all for listening to that. And I hope you got some pointers set from your own from the space acronym. So now we're just gonna go to the chat and we're going to um, see, go through our prayer list. Uh, so thank you all, all the
participants that are on the line. We thank you, um, Sister Nikki and Brother Chris, uh, Pastor O'Geese and my BFF Shirley, my brother Mo and his wife, Sharonda. Thank you all. Uh, Sister Dorothy Hannah, Mother Hannah, how are you? Sister Grace Ware, Sister Mary Stevens, Sister Reba Terry, and Sister Susan Reed. I'm glad you all made it back safely from your cruise, Susan. All right, and we're gonna go with, take out the prayer request. And we know God hears and answers prayers. So make sure you get your prayer request in there. Brother Mo, prayer request, pray for all of those with special needs. Uh, spiritual health, emotional, professional, and family challenges. Prayer of comfort for those who are bereaved, including the Dotsons, the Bailey, the Reeves family. They lost a loved one last week. Prayer for all of our children and grandchildren and seniors. And Sister Johnny May, Sister Mary Stevens, want continued prayer for our sisters, Johnny May. Nieces Vicky and Audra, and salvation for her brother Napoleon and nephews Anthony and Dante. And Sister Susan wants continued prayers for her family still grieving from the loss of her mom. Special prayer request for her son Walter Miller, who is having an extremely hard time in the grieving. And from Meredith, continue prayer for um, Julian. He was diagnosed with aplastic anemia and will soon need a bone marrow transplant. And we're praising God that Nadia, Nadia Hill is home. Continue prayer for God's covering over her sons, Dylan, Colin, and Aaron, along with her husband, Brian, and herself as they never gave her ALS diagnosis. Praising God for moving her Duke appointment from February to today, hallelujah. And from Nikki wants prayer for her son, Calvin, and his acceptance of Jesus. Also prayer for the family healing uh, within the family. Praying for Prince Richardson and Anne, and Sandra Pierre, that they return back to the Lord. And pray for different employment for Chris and Marina. Pray for family healing within our family, along with safety through the day for Chris, Marina, Calvin, Legend, and BJ. Um, Richard Porter, had a bad infection in his left foot and we're praying for healing. Um, praying for Sister Meredith in Christ, pray for a bolus of strength, encouragement, perseverance and complete healing. And we're praying for my BFF, Sister Shirley O'Geese, who wasn't feeling well this morning. And Sister Shwanja wants to continue prayer for her sister, Ada Pearl. And I'd like continued prayer for my sisters, Daisy and Rose and my brother, AJ, who's all battling cancer. And for my sister, Betty, who's battling dementia. And God, and just a special prayer for, for my family as a whole. So let's just pray, dear God, we're just thanking you that you are a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. And God, I pray that you will be with everyone on this prayer line. And whatever their personal request is, prayer request, spoken or unspoken, you know. You know what every one of them need. You know what every one of them stand in need of. And you, God, are a healer. You are a provider. You are a protector. You are all of that. And God, I always say, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it seems like, no matter what it feels like, you are still in control. And we are not going to look at our problems, but we're going to look to you. We're going to continue to look to the hills because that's where our help is coming from. And we know 
that you, God, are still in control. And we are going to praise you right now in advance. And God, I lift up every one of these prayer requests to you for you to pour your anointing over, allow your Holy Spirit to dwell with each and one of us as we're going through our tests and trials, but never forgetting that you are still in control. God, we thank you in advance in your son Jesus' name. Amen. So we finished up uh, Proverbs today. So tomorrow, if you're willing to host one morning, we're asking that you contact my brother, Pastor O. Peace. His phone number is area code 615 267 8690. That's again, area code 615 267 8690. Or you can email him at S A O G I S T E at iCloud.com. Now, tomorrow we're starting a new chapter, Ecclesiastic, and Pastor Nathan Ritter will be starting with Ecclesiastic Chapter One. You don't want to miss it. You want to be here to hear from this man of God. Tonight, Join us for a radical prayer and praise meeting at 6.30 p.m. in person in the church, or you can join on the YouTube channel. And also the Seniors of Riverside are hosting a senior prayer meeting uh, this morning at 11.30 a.m. Invite a friend, a neighbor, a family member, or a co-worker. The Zoom link is in the chat. Make sure you get that link and join in with them. Guys, thank you so, so much for putting up with me. I hope something was said or, or, or read that you can feast off of through the day. Go out and enjoy this terrific Tuesday. And we'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. Have a good one. Love you all. Bye-bye.